This video will discuss both the 4 bolt stiffened and 8 bolt stiffened configurations for the bolted end plate connection in VA Connect. Let's get started. We will start out by opening the project file for the completed design from the bolted end plate design training video which used the 4 bolt unstiffened configuration. We will rework the design of this connection using both the 4 bolt stiffened and the 8 bolt stiffened configurations to see the differences between the three configurations that are now available in the program. As a reminder, this connection was first designed to connect a W21 by 62 beam to two W14 by 90 columns in a moment frame. Since we wanted both connections in the frame to have the same detail, two load sets were used, one for the connection on the left and one for the connection on the right. The process of defining the beams and column geometry and applying the loads is covered in the bolted end plate design training video. Note, regardless of which configuration is chosen, VIA Connect uses the AISC Design Guide 4 procedure, which designs the end plate and column flange using a yield line analysis to ensure that both remain elastic and thick plate behavior is achieved. With thick plate behavior, the bolts are not subject to significant prying forces. Selecting the end plate, let's change the configuration to 4 bolt stiffened. Upon doing so, the stiffeners appear in the model, and we are given options to set the stiffener thickness and to find the welds for the stiffeners to the beam and to the end plate. Looking at the project status, we see a few things have happened from a capacity standpoint. First, the end plate flexure unity has dropped from 0.975 to 0.719. Second, the end plate shear yield and shear rupture checks were deactivated and dropped to zero. And third, the end plate stiffener thickness and weld limit states were activated in the program. The presence of the end plate stiffener changes the yield line pattern for the end plate and increases the capacity of the one inch thick end plate in flexor from 4,920 kip inches for the unstiffened configuration to 6,675 kip inches for the stiffened configuration. As a result, we can now reduce the thickness of the plate and the limit state still passes with a unity of less than one. According to Design Guide 4, the end plate shear yield and shear rupture do not need to be considered when stiffeners are present. As a result, these limit states have become inactive for the stiffened configurations. Next, we see that the end plate stiffener thickness is failing with a unity exceeding 1. Clicking on the limit state, we see that the thickness is not dependent on applied loads. Rather, Design Guide 4 requires that the stiffener is thick enough to meet or exceed the strength of the beam web and that it is thick enough to prevent local buckling. In this case, the stiffener must be at least 0.55 inches to exceed the capacity of the web so we will increase the thickness from 3 eighths of an inch to 5 eighths of an inch. And upon doing so, we see that the limit state now passes. With the thicker end plate stiffener, the end plate stiffener weld check now fails. Per the design guide, VA Connect requires the stiffener to beam flange and stiffener to end plate welds to develop the stiffener plate and shear at the beam flange and in tension at the end plate. Therefore, to meet the capacity requirements, we need to increase the weld size at the stiffener to end plate connection to 7 sixteenths of an inch and at the stiffener to beam to 3 eighths of an inch. After doing this, we see that all the limit states pass, but we see a warning for the bolted end plate detailing. Clicking on the warning, we see that complete joint penetration welds are recommended for the stiffener to end plate when the thickness of the stiffener exceeds 3 eighths of an inch, according to the design guide. So let's change the stiffener end plate weld to CJP, and now the connection passes and we have no detailing warnings. Therefore, we have successfully designed the connection using the 4 bolt stiffened configuration. Next, let's change the configuration to 8 bolt stiffened by first increasing the distance to the top of the beam and then increasing the depth of the end plate to accommodate the extra bolts. Doubling the bolts in the connection, 
going from 4 to 8, causes the unity value for the bolt shear and bolt tension to decrease by a factor of 2 as expected. We also see that the end plate flexure and column flange flexure now fail since their design moment does not depend on the applied loads but rather is a function of the no prime bolt tension rupture strength which has significantly increased from the extra bolts. For this case we will reduce the size of the bolts and adjust the bolt type until the bolt tension rupture unity value is just less than 1. Now we see that the column plate flexure unity drops to 0.708 which means that we can further reduce the thickness of the end plate since the additional bolts change the yield line pattern for the end plate and increase the capacity of the end plate in flexure. The additional bolts also change the yield line pattern for the column flange, which significantly increases the capacity of the column flange in flexure from just over 7,000 kip inches for four bolts to 8,200 kip inches for eight bolts. Therefore, if this limit state is controlling for the 4-bolt configuration, it might be more economical to switch to an 8-bolt stiffened configuration than to increase the column size to one with thicker flanges. Now all of the limit states of the connection pass, and we have no detailed warnings. Therefore, we have successfully designed the connection using the 8-bolt stiffened configuration. In summary, as we went from the 4-bolt unstiffened to the 4-bolt stiffened and then to the 8-bolt stiffened configurations, the thickness of the end plate progressively decreased due to the changing yield line patterns for the end plate. Going from the unstiffened configuration to the stiffened configuration allowed us to no longer check the end plate shear yield and shear rupture limit states but required us to check end plate stiffener thickness and weld requirements. Going from 4 bolts to 8 bolts obviously allowed us to use smaller diameter bolts but also changed the yield line pattern for the column flange and increased the column flange flexure capacity. In just a few minutes we have used VA Connect to create an optimal design for our bolted end plate connection using the 4-bolt stiffened and the 8-bolt stiffened configurations. We hope these new configurations help you better optimize your connection design for bolted end plates using VA Connect. Thanks for watching and have a great day.